When you look at old sports logos, the vintage ones, there's this like nostalgia and timelessness that just hits you differently. And I'm talking about those ones that are like the old tennis club or like a, maybe a cricket club, like a patch or a badge logo or something like that. They're just so cool. And so today in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make one of those vintage sports badge logos using Kittle and it's gonna be super easy. Now, if you don't know what Kittle is, that is our online design tool, which you can sign up to try it out for free at the link down below, and then you can follow along with me. So let's get started. All right, to get started, we're gonna hit new project up here in Kittle, and then once it loads in, we are going to get started with our layout. So let's go to text. We're gonna work on text first for our vintage sports logo, and what I'm gonna do is type in Cambridge. So we're gonna go with a Cambridge tennis academy style logo now i want to use a serif font i'm going to go through a couple i want to find that one that's just going to work that's going to make sense i think rondel is nice at the all caps like this you can see it looks very old school it looks very vintage uh, very vintage academy style or like maybe like a tennis club or something like that so we've duplicated our text which by the way you can do with alter option and drag and then i'm going to type in tennis academy here and we're going to have this text as a definitely be smaller this is our subtext here but we're going to do a different serif font i love old benchville it's one of my favorite fonts and i think it fits really well it's not as intense as the uh rondel of course the rondel's uh the cambridge text is bigger uh, and so we just needed Tennis Academy to be our little subtext. Now let's let's select the circle transformation. Let's wrap our Cambridge text around Tennis Academy. And you can easily go over here and adjust uh, your tracking if you need to. Your letter spacing, you can adjust your size of the text. You can even move it around to wherever you need to. Uh, and make sure that it's everything is centered here together now this doesn't look centered but we can easily move it right here if I hit edit transformation then I can select both and hit align so you can use those align tools and they're really gonna help you out now in the elements panel for illustrations we're gonna get two tennis rackets and I think this is gonna work really well to complete our frame and we're gonna make a little frame here I'm gonna put a tennis ball here in the middle you can see how easy this is to just search for and find the right illustrations for your logo now what we need to do is find a banner because I want to put love the game there in the banner uh, maybe that's this Academy's slogan or something like that so this banner might work maybe we choose a different one I think this one will work just a little bit better I don't want such of the intense waviness I kind of just want one arc here uh, to put some arced text and I think this is gonna work really well I'm gonna make sure that the fill color is white there because we're gonna change that later then I'm gonna bring down some of my subtext I'm gonna put established here hit enter and I'm going to put here 1989 as our established dates pretty old it's pretty vintage exactly what we want uh, it's not super super old like the you know 20s or 30s or something but i think it fits the time period of what we're going for right here hey real quick if you're getting value out of this vintage sports logo tutorial let me know by hitting that thumbs up button and that red subscribe button then let me know down in the comments what are you going to use your vintage badge logo for did you recently maybe start or join a sports team or something like that or are you going to use this vintage patch badge style for something else i'm curious to know how you're going to use kittle so definitely comment down below and let's get back to the tutorial and once we have that squared away i think we need to add a little bit of branch a little bit of filler over here on the left and right of the tennis racket there's a little bit of space there uh, between the banner and the tennis racket now we need to put our text right here in the banner so let's duplicate again hold the alter option key and drag and it will duplicate your text let's bring it to the front right click bring to front and then all we need to do is click in you don't have to double click you can just click in and we're going to hit love the game uh, and then what we're going to do zoom in a little bit you can hit the plus key to zoom in we're going to hit custom and then make our own custom path to make sure that this text follows along the the line uh, the arc of this banner that's a really really easy way it's super easy to do you have complete control with those little nodes there uh, that you can move around it's really really nice you can get it exactly 
how you want to. And then you can adjust your uh, your size, your font size, and anything else. You can even move it around, uh, do anything that you want to. So I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking here to make sure everything is looking the way that it needs to. Uh, and then what we're going to do is create a frame around here. So I want to put like an oval frame around here. So let's hit this basic shape. And then all I have to do is basically uh, make it the size of the logo, basically make it the size of how we have the layout. So I can move these uh, left and right anchor points, these larger anchor points here, uh, and I can just move it to the space that it needs to be, uh, making this oval, this kind of egg shape here, uh, a little bit bigger, a little bit wider uh, than it needs to be, and then I just need to play and make sure that it is correct here. It may take you a little bit of time. I'm just going to do a little bit of tweaking here, but what I'm going to do is now make two, so I want it to have an uh, inner and an outer border because we're going to make one completely filled, and we're going to make one kind of this kind of uh, character uh, character framing here. Um, so once that is where it needs to be, uh, we're going to make one of these borders a little bit thicker. We need to make sure that we select the right one. Uh, we're going to make the inner border um, a little bit thicker. You can see there the border weight is a little bit uh, beefier than the outer weight. And I'll show you why here in just a second. But once we feel like we have it where we want to, which may take you a second just to make sure that you've got everything all squared away, we can select the other one. Uh, make sure they're all centered. We want to make sure they're centered horizontally and vertically. And we need to bring our banner text up to the front so you can see there it's not clipping and the, the border isn't going over top of. And now we can select Select our outer border and give it a fill. So now we can give it any fill we want, uh, send it to the back, and now you can see what I mean by having a double border, this kind of uh, very vintage-esque double border. We'll make the frame, we'll make the banner color the same there, uh, and then we can go over here into the textures and we'll add some texture on top of this, and then I'm going to show you how to clip it so that it just applies to the design. So let's pick one of these textures. Um, maybe we use a paper texture to make it a little bit more realistic, a little bit more grungy, a little bit more grainy. So you can see it's kind of coming through. Let's change some colors so that you can actually see it come through. If I hit clip content, by the way, it will only apply to the design. It won't apply to the entire background. So now let me change this color here down in the project colors. I'll change the black to a green. I think that's very uh, tennis-esque, this kind of vintage uh, dark green. And then I can also change the background color uh, to anything I want. And you can tell that that texture is only applying to the design, which is how we want it. Now you can make your background any way that you want it. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're going to clip it and you're going to download it without a background. Of course, you can have it with a background. It's, it's completely up to you. Uh, how you want to download this. Uh, but once you feel like the design is where it needs to be, uh, we can go over here to the download settings and then we can tweak some things to get it how we want it. Let's remove the background. We're going to optimize the quality and then we're going to change our DPI. Maybe we want to print this on something. So uh, I'm going to do DPI 300. Uh, we're going to go to 3000 pixels. That's the size I need it. And then I can export it in any way that I need to. And here is the final design you can see uh, mocked up as a sticker right here. You can also see uh, what it would look like on a tote bag. I hope you had a ton of fun uh, with this tutorial and can't wait to see what you create. Now, if you want to see other tutorials using Kittle, I have these videos here on my right that I know you're going to enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos and features and things like that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.